my gear is the right state because I've not fished in six months. But we've come down to Stanick Lakes for 48 hours fishing. It's a venue I've never been to before. It's good for a bite from what I hear. And that's what I want to do. I want to come down here, get a couple of bites. I've had a quick walk around the lake just to see what I can find. Um, and it's quite apparent that most of the fish are on the end of this wind here. It's a good southwesterly. There's already a few anglers on. So I've got a fair bit of choice, but not if I want to really get on them. So I've tried to pick a swim where I can get my own little bit of fishing going and I'm not sort of ruining theirs, so to speak, as they're already in their trip. So I've got a swim that's sort of in a main bowl of water where this wind's hacking in. We've already seen about half a dozen shows while we're walking around here. So I want to start getting my gear sorted out. We'll get some rods out and then we'll talk through sort of what I'm looking at when I'm first setting up on a new venue. Standing in my peg now, I'm thinking, well, where am I going to start leading around first? Well, firstly, the fish were showing in a certain area, so I can start on that point. And secondly, I'm looking for those tree line markers that are really obvious. Now, busy day tickets like this, there's going to be certain areas where people are going to fish regularly. And nine times out of 10, people will pick the most obvious marker to fish to so that they can see it at night or whatever. And quite often, you'll find quite a nice clear spot there. So looking out in front of me, I've got so three or four swims on a far bank there, and above every single one of those swims there's a massive dip in that tree line. So they're the three obvious things first. So I'm gonna start on the right hand one, work my way left, because there's been showing in all of those areas. And then I can start sort of leading back, see what's clear, and then from there I can get a bit of an idea on the depths, what's on the bottom, and then hopefully I'll find a spot sort of fairly quickly. I wanna make sure I'm standing in the same spot every time. So I'm on the third board back from the front of this jetty here. And I know every time I cast out, I can stand on this third ball back and I know that I'm stood in the right place and I'm casting from the same spot every time. So I'm trying to find something that's a little bit firmer or harder than anywhere else. So judging by what I'm finding at the moment, it seems like there's quite a lot of silt around. And if I can find something that's firmer, not necessarily gravel, but if it's firmer, then it sort of indicates to me that the fish have fed on it. Um, and also, I'll obviously know for certain that there's no, that's the one, right there. Yeah. That's much better where that is. So if I bring this lead in, I'm not skipping it across the surface too much. Yeah, so now that's come in with absolutely nothing on it whatsoever, which is telling me that there's no sediment, there's no sort of crap all over that lead. Whereas the other spots where I was slightly shorter, there's a tiny little bit that catches on the swivel there. If you drag it back, you're gonna drag it into something, but you're dragging it behind, like closer to where your rigs are gonna be. You don't need to do that. You, where that lead lands there, if you're feeling the lead down and your rod tip's in the same place every time, you're always gonna, your rigs are always gonna be laying that way, sort of further away from the spot. So to me, I, I don't care really too much about what's behind it. I've already leaded shorter and I know it's softer and there's a little bit of crap over there and I've gone further and it's cleaner. So now sitting there, I know the rig there, the bait's gonna be over there, and I'm fine with that. The line lay can just land in that sediment, that's fine, it's gonna conceal it lovely. So that's it. Just get a little bit of bait on there, a couple of rods on there, and then I'll probably, I'll probably keep a rod down here for the day um, and see what happens. So I think once I've sorted this out, we'll then think about what we do about our baiting approach. Yeah, lovely. Right, so I've got about a dozen spots on that main spot now and two rods on there, so they're all rocking. I'm gonna do a little short rod now down the right-hand side here where we've seen them fish showing earlier. I had a quick lead around, found something nice and clear. I'm just gonna flick a mesh bag on there with a single hook bait, catapult a few baits over the top, 
and then that's that one sorted. So I'm just going to flick that out now. Yeah, love it. Right, we'll quickly pop that down. So I was thinking about my baiting approach, my baiting approach before I sort of did that main spot. And this weather's gone really overcast now. So I'm getting the impression now that I think they're gonna be up for a bit of grub, you know, with a lot of showing in various areas down this end. They're quite active, these fish at the moment. So I've got no problem in putting a bit of bait out and trying to get a bit of competitive feeding going on. You know, this, this lake's quite heavily stocked for the size of it. So I reckon we can probably get a few fish going. Right, so my spot where I've been fishing short range down to my right here, the fish were there earlier. And in the last couple of hours while we've been having a bit of lunch watching the water, they seem to have pushed right down in this reed line. I can't watch it anymore, so I've wound in, I'm just gonna put a little solid bag on, underarm it just down this reed line. My rod tips are out past the reeds here, so if I get to take it, just I can get it out easy enough. Flip this down here, see if we can nick a quick bite. There's been plenty showing down here. It's not far down, I'm just literally gonna underarm it. That'll do. Let's see what that does. Perfect. We've um, been looking down this margin where um, unfortunately we, I foul hooked one earlier, had a belt in take and it wrapped round. Um, anyway, we'll chat about that in a minute. We've been looking at sort of the middle of the pond again and these fish that were down here have been showing one after the other out here in the middle and we were like, any minute this main spot's gonna go, any minute. And we were just sitting there filming the shows and uh, sure enough, bang on time, middle rods just busted off. So. First bite, first proper bite anyway. So yeah, let's see if we can get this one in and show you. Can't remember what rig this is on. Can't remember what way round I've done them, but one was on a bottom bait and then one was on a bright one on a pop-up. So it be interesting to see which one's gone. But it's nice to know that after the first day, they've already got on the bait, which is nice. This weather's looking prime now. Yeah, that's gonna try and get around there, innit? Let's try and get this thing in. Got a few scales on the old bad boy. Lovely. Wee. <laughs> what happened there? It's all right, she's in the net. It's all right, I don't have to worry. Cool, it's only a small one. Probably a low, yeah, probably low double or something, but it's first bite, first one on the spot. I'm gonna get the rig sorted. I'm gonna get our rod straight back out, couple of spawns over the top, and then we'll have a look at her. Happy days. First fish from a new venue, always a good way to start, isn't it? 
Also goes to show to this spot that I found was obviously the right move. Moving it even shorter obviously hasn't hindered the fish at all. This is on that spot. I originally was going to fish longer out and then chose to fish shorter in case somebody turns up opposite. And we've had the first one off of it, so it's a good start. Hopefully more to come for the evening. So uh, there's been plenty showing out there. Got the rod back out already, got the spot. Rocking again with a few more spawns. So uh, yeah, I can get this one back and relax and have a bit of dinner myself. So fingers crossed, we get a few more in the night and hopefully we get a few more bigger ones as well. Happy days. So it's now a couple of hours since I've had that fish. Um, it's actually been quite a good day to be fair. I said to the guys earlier that if we can nick a bite on the first day going into a couple of night trip, then I'm happy sort of thing. It's something to work on. So uh, we can chill back, sit back and relax, so to speak. Got a little bit of food on the go now. Uh, I mentioned earlier when I was playing that fish that I had an occurrence with a foul look fish. So that rod that I had down that margin, um, we had a roaring take, it's buckled right round. And as we played the fish, we, it's become apparent as it's been rolling closer in that um, it's been hooked like right on the side of its flank. Um, obviously we're not going to count it, but while it was in the net, I got a bit of the old uh, carp care out, a bit of propolis and just put it on the wound. And because the fish have spawned recently, it was quite a good idea just to check the fish over, just check there weren't any other scars or any, any sort of wounds on it, so to speak. So checked it over, it was all fine, um, sent him on his merry way. But what I did notice was that fish had quite a few leeches all over its back. Um, so I don't know whether it's a case of that fish has probably been rolling and flanking to try and lose some of them leeches and parasites, which we then picked off of it. Um, and maybe it's flanked right where the solid bag was and it's just caught it on the side. Or whether on the take, the, well, maybe we hooked it in the mouth and it's popped out at some point, you just don't know. So either way, it's nice to know that there were fish down in that area. So I'm definitely gonna try and keep investigating that tomorrow. If them fish start showing again, I can just pull back off of that spot where I am now um, and move that right or back round again. So gives me an option there. We've had fish over there. We've now had a fish off of the baited spot. So I've got something to work on tomorrow now. I can enjoy my food, hopefully get an interrupted night's sleep. Hopefully we get a couple more bites. Um, yeah, and then we'll pick things up in the morning. Maybe once we've had a morning coffee, we'll see what the first light brings, see if we get another bite, and then we'll go through the rigs, we'll go through the bait, and sort of bit other little bits and pieces that I've been putting together just to try and get them bites. But for now, I want to tuck into my grub. <clears throat> <laughs> well, that was a very quiet night. Um, there's definitely fish showing down. I'm just sort of to the right of where I'm stood here. Um, and through the night, there was plenty of fish showing. But since or just before first light, it's really slowed down. There's been one or two straight out in front of this peg. So I'm just sort of stood here now, looking up while it's early this morning, before any other anglers turn up. A couple have just turned up, so I think the gates have only just opened. Um, I'm gonna try and contemplate whether or not I need to move now because throughout the day there could be more anglers turning up and then if the fish have moved, I've got no chance of getting on them. So as it stands at the moment, it's almost like as that sun's got over these trees, nothing, it seems to have stopped near on all the showing. So yeah, this is sort of the battle of it really, especially with day ticket fishing. I need to try and sort it out now and work out what I'm gonna do for the day because I might not get the opportunity later to move or anything like that. So I'm gonna keep watching the water, might have another coffee. I'm just gonna keep wandering up and down the bank here, not disturbing anyone else. And um, yeah, messes with your mind a little bit. So yeah, we'll keep watching for a little bit and then we'll make up a plan, I think. We'll have one more coffee and then we'll decide what we're gonna do.
Well, after uh, looking around the lake, trying to see if there was an opportunity to move, we decided not to in the end, because there wasn't really a lot elsewhere. And then while I was on the other side of the lake having a look, two fish actually showed down this margin again where I'd flicked that solid bag yesterday afternoon. So I did exactly the same again. I freshened up the main spot and uh, God, I've got a load of weed on this line. And um, yeah, just flicked another bag down. I changed the rig actually, which we'll go through in a minute. Just flicked it back on the same spot I had it yesterday. It's not taken too long. And I've had an absolute melter down that margin. I've got to be careful here because I've got a load of weed on that line that's creating a bit of a funny angle here. Could do with that getting off really. Looks slightly bigger than the one yesterday, which is good. Oh, that's a lovely scaly one. Come on, mate. Look at him. That's a belter. Go on, mate. Go on, up, boy. <laughs> yes, get in there. Go on, the scaly banger. Check him out. He's a bit bigger than the last one as well. Yes, 20 pound at that. Well happy with that, proper apple slice scales on him. Right, I'm not going to waste any more time. Now that sun's come round this bay, that sun's sort of beating down right on the cusp of where I've been fishing down there, so I want to get that bag sorted again. I changed from a solid bag to a mesh bag, so we'll have a look at that in a minute once I've got this fish sorted. I'm going to get that rod back down there. We'll sort everything out, we'll just have a quick drink, let him rest for a bit, then we'll have a look at this scaly belt of a happy days, bite number two. that is what we come to Stanick Lakes for. Beautiful scaly bangers like this and just under 26 pound, I'm well chuffed with that. So a little bag just down that margin on that reed line where I investigated yesterday, where they were showing, they turned up again this morning, so decided to stay where we were and uh, it's paid dividends. So uh, yeah, that walk around the lake just reiterated that I was where I should be. More anglers have turned up, so I think the pressure's moved on and they've just gone down to that quiet reed line for a bit of shelter we've capitalized on that. So keeping my eyes on the water has made sure I've had this belter. So I think for now, we're gonna enjoy the moment. We'll get a couple of photos. And I think we'll get a bit of breakfast on because I'm getting a bit hungry. Happy days. Well, it's been a few hours now since I had that fish. And although there's still fish in the area, sort of standing on the edge of the swim, you can actually see a few fish cruising in and out of that margin down there. Um, so I'm still happy to keep a rod down there. There's not really an awful lot happening in the middle of the lake. We're still seeing the odd one topping over, that kind of thing. So I'm still happy to sort of leave the rods as they are. But while we're waiting, the owner, Phil, I believe his name was, came round, had a little chat with us and sort of told us a little bit more about the history of the lake, which is quite nice of him. And it was quite interesting as well. Um, especially coming to a new venue, I didn't really know, know an awful lot about the lake's history. Um, so yeah, that was interesting. But while we're waiting for one of these to melt off, it's probably a good opportunity to go through these rigs that I'm using. So this is the one that I have caught both of my fish on. Um, and again, I like to keep things really simple. And this is a rig that I've used pretty much most venues that I've ever fished. It's something along the lines of this. So going to new places, I don't want to be changing rigs. I don't want to be using something I'm not used to using. Um, but it's very, very simple. It's just a simple blowback presentation there with probably a size four, I believe that is, wide gape hook. And what I am doing is topping it with a little bit of yellow. Um, what I did at the very start is I went in with sort of kind of three different colors on, on all rods just to see what sort of color was working. But now I've had both bites on yellow now on two different spots. Uh, that third rod that is out at the moment is on a hinge, which I'll show you in a second. Um, I'm now gonna change them all over to this. Um, so that, that will be the way to go. But the other one I have got on at the moment, obviously started off with a Fruity Licious pop up on this. And now at the moment is a bug half tone. 
Um, but it's just a hinge, hinge rig on sort of, again, a semi-stiff coated braid. Um, and I've caught loads of fish on this. This is pretty much all I've been using for the last couple of seasons now. And it's served me really well on my syndicate at RK Leisure's um, Horton Boat Pool. Um, and yeah, I, this is sort of my, my go-to really, if I'm unsure what the bottom is, or if it's not really clean gravel, that kind of thing was a bit silty. I love using something like this that just sinks nice and slow, nestles over the top of any debris or anything like that. And I was kind of hoping that a bright one or a pop-up might have nicked me an earlier bite. Doesn't seem to have worked that way. So I'm more than happy to take this off now. Um, and I'll just be focusing all my efforts on them wafters with a little, little yellow over the top of it. So I'm gonna give it another hour or so because there's still fish milling around. I don't wanna bring one of them rods in and just thrash it straight over the top of them and spook them. There's a lot more pressure now. There's more anglers that have turned up. Oh, cheeky little liner on the right hander there. So with any luck, that's gonna go soon because there's still fish moving around there. But as I was saying, we've got that left hander that I'm gonna change. Don't wanna do it yet because there's fish in the area over there. There's other anglers that have been thrashing leads in, finding their spots. Those fish are now in my area. The last thing I wanna do is pull my rod in, flick another one over the top of them to push out. These are very pressured fish. They can very easily, all they'll do is they'll find the quietest part of the lake. If there's a couple of swims that there's not a lot of disturbance and where all I've been doing is just flicking a rod down this edge here, I'm not creating an awful lot of disturbance in it. I don't wanna keep that to a minimum. So I'm gonna leave it till a bit later this afternoon and then I'll probably very likely just get one flick straight over the, over the spot, swapping this over. I think that'll probably do us, but hopefully that right hander goes again. So I'm gonna sit on my hands a little bit more. Hopefully Vinny makes me another coffee because he's been keeping me hydrated all day. And uh, yeah, sit back and wait for the action to happen again. Yep. yep, someone look after this. Well, I was literally just about to hoist that carp up to the camera and explain to you that sitting on your hands um, was the right thing to do. After we've netted that fish, I've got the rod straight back out again and I haven't even got that fish out and it's gone. He's now completely full. And I'm only catching these fish just close to the bank here, down the edge. And resting the swim, not re-chucking. And keeping, it, keeping disturbance to a minimum has meant now, number four is in the net. There's times to really put in the effort and work your swim. And there's other times to just sit on your hands, let everyone make the disturbance and let the fish come into the quiet area, which is your swim. And this is paying off. I've not seen anyone else catching fish today and I'm now on fish number four, and it still looks likely for another one. So I'm gonna do the same again, unhook the fish, sort the rod out, get it straight back on the spot, and then we'll get these two fish out and show you. But yeah, happy days, what an afternoon's fishing. Well, this is the fish I was about to show you, and my rod's had other plans. Fortunately enough, I've got two cameramen with me today, 
So Wally very kindly sorted this fish out in the sling, got it safely back in the water while I played that other fish, which I think is a little bit bigger. Um, so yeah, getting that rod straight back on the spot was definitely the one. So yeah, I'm gonna get this one back um, and we'll show you that slightly bigger fish, fingers crossed. So yeah, brilliant, happy days, great afternoons fishing. Well, as I said to you before, keeping your swim quiet while all that Friday traffic turns up can sometimes pay off. And now look what's happened. That rod that I flicked straight back out again after having that bite, 30 pound four, wicked fish. There's not tons of 30 pounders in this lake either. So this is a real treat to bag one of these. And don't forget, I've never seen this place before. This is a completely new venue for me. And I've now had four bites, two 20s and a 30 pounder. Can't ask for better than that. Wicked, wicked. Awesome, it's a warm day. We'll get a few photos of her quickly and get straight back. Happy days. <laughs> Check it out. Well, that's been a wicked day's angling today. Uh, just sitting here enjoying my coffee now, just uh, thinking about everything. So glad that I decided to stay where I am. You know, it's just always good to sort of recap on what you've done, what you would have changed, if anything, and that kind of thing. And I always like to do that in the evening, sort of coming towards the end of a trip. So recapping on what had happened today, um, we obviously had a look around the lake this morning and we made the choice to stay where we were. Um, decided to rest the swim as well sort of I say rest the swim it's more not chucking leads around not recasting moving spots adding bait anything like that and just leave the rods as they were now them couple of fish showed quite early this morning down that margin and although I thought them fish had moved elsewhere that was enough signs to, to, to sort of reiterate that I needed to stay where I was other people have turned up they've been markering up sending their leads all over the place spawning everywhere and I've just kept that one rod just down there on a bag, no bait over it, um, no disturbance, that kind of thing. And that's really paid off. So we had those two better fish. After that, we did have another bite and it was probably, I don't know, 10, 11 pounds, some of that little mirror. Um, wasn't gonna get it out with the carnage that we'd had before. Uh, we just wanted to get, get ourselves set up again. So we were gonna get it out in the water and just show you quickly as I put it back, but that fish had other ideas. Other ideas. It just went absolutely nuts bolted out the net as I was going to lift it out, quickly show you and put it back. Um, but that's it. So we've got, we're going into the last night now, five fish under my belt. Uh, can't really ask for better than that. So we've had two doubles, two twenties and a 30. Um, if I don't have any more bites, I'm more than content with that, especially on a venue. I've turned up almost blind. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm really chuffed to bits with that. So to be honest with my angling, don't think there's, there's an awful lot I would have changed to be honest. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going in tonight pretty happy. But yeah, for now, we're gonna chill out, enjoy coffee, have a bit of a social, I think. Chill out a little bit, so yeah.
good morning. This is the morning I've got at the moment. Unfortunately, that rod down the right hand margin there. First, I thought I got done because um, it did go like a take, but I think now looking at it, it might have been a trailer, um, what we've been having this morning. So really, really early this morning, about half past three, four o'clock, I did have a take on the left hand rod. Unfortunately, it, it got most of the way in and then came off, I suppose, with barbless hooks you're going to bump the odd one every now and then. So it didn't feel massive. I'm not overly gutted. I did have a good afternoon yesterday. But then since then, I got the rod back out and it's been constant liners on both of those rods in that baited area. And actually, more recently, I, ha I had one kite right, right through that was pretty, I'm pretty sure that was a, a trailer. And I think what's probably happened is that's, that fish has gone right and it's made its way down there and maybe that's what's happened on this one. Because the, the hook bait's still fine. The rig's still sitting perfectly. My hook silicon there hasn't moved, so there's nothing to indicate that that's actually gone in a fish's mouth and it's hooked itself. So I'm gonna get this rod back out. I've only got a few more hours left because I've probably got to get going at about lunchtime. I've got a few hours drive ahead of me to get home. I've got a bit of work to do. It's back to reality. So I wanna try and maximize this morning bite time as much as we can. Once I've done this rod, we'll have a quick coffee and then what we'll do is we'll have a little look at the baiting approach for both areas. You know, I've got a baited area out there, so we'll look at in detail what I've been putting out on that spot. And then we'll also look at what the, the approach I've been doing down that right hand margin. But for now, I'm gonna get this rig sorted. Join me back here on Vinny's favourite love vlog. Not really sure why I'm touching it, but here we go anyway. We're going to use this opportunity to go through the baiting approaches on both those different spots. Now, don't need to go into too much detail. It's really, really simple. Um, so the main spot here that I've had that first bite on um, is literally just a small mix there. And I've started off with some 15 and 12 mil bug. And then the 15s, I've just had them in my hands and I'm just breaking a few handfuls up. So I'm getting all different shapes, sizes, that kind of thing, rather than going for a chopper or anything like that. And I've got some crayfish mini mix, crayfish maxi mix, and then a small douse of corn there. Now what you'll see is I've only put a small amount of corn in there because I only want a little fleck of color. And it gives me that hook bait option. You noticed earlier where I was tipping the hook baits off with a little bit of yellow wafter and that just blends in a little bit there, nice and subtly. So that's the main spot there. And then once I've got the mix there, I've just got a generous helping of the bug liquid food. And literally all I'm doing is just spreading the whole lot straight over the top, nice and generously, just to let that all soak in. I'll give that a really good mix up. And I can, I'll can i do this when I'm sort of in the van before I'm getting my barrow out. And then while I'm sort of picking my swims or going around the lake, trying to figure out what I'm doing, that's gonna soak right into them pellets, gonna soak into the boilie, even the corn will take on some of that flavor and it'll go sort of nice and stodgy. And that's just gonna go straight out onto that main spot. Now that did do me a couple of bites. Now we're really active on that area this morning, but the way it's worked out so far, that's not really been the one. Now it's picked us off for probably a couple of those bonus fish, but that margin down there has been the one this trip. And all I've been doing here, I've got a little old maggot tub that I always keep on me. And all that's in there is just crayfish mini mix, nothing else. Now what I've been doing is just getting a small PVA stick. And I'll put in a few of these mini mix pellets and I'll just get about three or four 12 mil bug. And I'm just breaking them up with my hands, just popping them in the bag, top it off again with a little bit more pellet hooking out onto my rig and I'm literally just wading out, flicking out down the margin. It couldn't be simpler. There's no fancy baits. There's no, there's no fancy extra bits and pieces I'm putting in there. Really simple fishing, just how I like it. Um, and again, rigs that have been doing the business, is just bug wafters. And all I'm doing is I'm getting my thumbnail and I'm just taking the top of the hook bait off. And when I get a bug wafter, I'm getting the very top dome part of that barrel, just cutting that off and just putting that as a little topper over the top. So it's still a round bait, but it's almost like a, part snowman, part sort of topper kind of thing. And that is literally it, it couldn't be simpler. And I'm hoping we've got, we've got liners going on that main rod, we've got liners going on that margin. Hopefully it won't be too much longer and I might get one last fish before I go home. Just got that rod back out after being done and uh, the fish had gave us just enough time. Core, that actually looks like a good one. 
Um, this just gave me just enough time to scoff a couple of egg rolls. And uh, sure enough, it's gone again. We were sort of saying to each other while we were having our breakfast, it'd be lovely to round the session off with one more fish before we start rounding everything up and, and heading back to the van. Didn't really want to end the trip on a lost fish. Um, although I've had a great trip, it's always nice just to bag one right at the very end. So fingers crossed this one goes in. It's a common, so it'd be lovely to get a I even said earlier, didn't I? I said, wouldn't it be lovely to get a common before we go? That's quite a nice fish actually. It's definitely a 20 pounder. So I'm going to focus on getting this one in because I really don't want to lose this one. And it's putting up a decent scrap. If I'll get this one in, fingers crossed. And uh, yeah, what a trip this is turning out to be. Mate, this is, the second you start getting something, it just turns again. We've been saying that, there's a, apparently there's a, a, I think it's a late record, it's like mid 30 common. Um, we were sort of joking about it, weren't we? Like, oh yeah, cool, can you imagine if that turns up? And now I've seen it's a common, and I've seen it just under the surface and it's got a bit of a belly on it. The odd bottom starts twinging. Here we go, he's getting a little bit closer now. Get that net dropped down. Get him ready. Slowly getting a bit more tired. <coughs> Come on. I'm trying to get underneath my rods now. Get that head up. Oh, mate, I think it. I'm going to be quiet now. Mate, mate, that's a chunk. Come on, come on. You, you won't see this, but Vinny's behind the camera, mouthing to me. He thinks he knows what fish it is, and um, <laughs> trying not to look at him. <sighs> One thing I want to say as well, is I haven't been fishing for quite a long time. Um, Probably, I did probably almost six months now. Um, I recently bought a house and I've spent, I've had to put the rods away to refurbish my house. Um, and I've been missing it every week. And this was like my first trip back out again. So this has been a real treat for me to get back out again. And the way the session's going so far is nothing short of perfect and what a place. Please don't go in that tree. It's hard to get his head up. Here he comes, here he comes. This is a strong fish, man. Either that or I'm out of practice and my guns are getting smaller. I say guns, they're more like little pistols. He, he's a big one, dude. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> She's a big one. Come on. You can tell she's getting tired. It's so desperate not to give up. Now's my chance. Now's my chance. <laughs> Get in there, you chunky common. <laughs> Mate, that's a good one, man. Mate, that's a big one. That's big. That's got to be it, isn't it? That's got to be the big common. <laughs> Mate, you want to see this? Oh mate, yeah, that's that's got to be it. 
<laughs> Go on, <my> boy! <laughs> right, I think I need to try and calm down a little bit first. We'll get some things sorted out and um, we'll have a look at this, but yeah, what a trip, man, what a trip. <sighs> oh, mate. I was only saying yesterday, wasn't I? There weren't many 30 pounders in here. But that's got to be a minute. Surely, 100%, man. I mean, look, look at it. Look at that. Oh, that's the one, boy. <laughs> that's him, innit? That's the one. Right. Let's, um, let's get things sorted out then, eh? Oh, yeah. good God. Oh, good God, mate, it's nearly 40. That's over 39 pounds. No. It's 39. That's 39.6, dude. 39.6? 39.6, dude. <laughs> Well, when your luck is in, your luck is in. I hate to sound cringy, but I can't believe this has happened. We were only talking about it early this morning. Oh, you're going to have that big comment soon. <laughs> and like, we're giggling about it. And it's only gone and happened. We've just had confirmation from Phil the Bailiff, who's come round to see it. It's a fish known as Emma's fish. The biggest fish in the lake at a new lake record, 39.6. And it's a new PB for me, so. I'm speechless, absolutely speechless. I couldn't have asked for a better trip. I don't know, I don't know what to say, really. Just a little single rod down that margin, paying attention to what's going on on the lake around you, being adaptable to your approach, not coming to the lake and thinking you're going to do the same thing all the time, assessing the situation and angling to what you're seeing has meant that we've now got a new lake record in our hands. And the first time I've ever seen this place. <sighs> magical, absolutely magical. <sighs> Get in there. So this young lad next to me, what's your name? Charlie. Charlie. Turned up this morning for a session and he's gonna go in after us. And this is First time he's ever seen a fish this big, so what do you reckon, mate? Smash. <laughs> yeah, she sure is. Right, I'm gonna get back. I'll let you have the next one, yeah? yeah all right. Nice one. Well, here she is one last time. 39 pounds and six ounces of Stanick Lakes Mallard Common. If you find yourself going to a new venue and you're not really sure what to do, keep your eyes on the water. Be adaptable to your approach, keeping quiet, keeping disturbance to a minimum when everyone else is thrashing the lake to a foam has paid off. Stick to your guns and rewards like this can happen. Happy, happy days. Well, I really do hope you've enjoyed watching this video as I have fishing in it. I'm going to slip her back now. <laughs>